This lesson is going to be talking about symmetry. Now symmetry has a couple of different aspects. It's your reflectional or rotational. Let's talk about reflectional symmetry first. For instance, when you were in school, excuse me, when you were little, you might remember making paper dolls. And when you made those paper dolls, you made them by cutting a piece of paper that you had folded in half. And each side of the paper doll was identical. So there was a reflectional symmetrical property with these paper dolls. There was a crease right down the middle. We had identical halves. Another time you did this in school, and you may still do it now, is when you take a piece of paper and you fold it. And then on the side of the piece of paper, you draw a heart. And then what do you do? You cut that heart out around the edge. And then you unfold it to make a perfect heart. That is another example of reflectional symmetry. So reflectional symmetry is when you fold something on a specific line, the folded part sits perfectly on the other side. So an example of a shape that we might think has some symmetry, which it would if we use this line. So if we use this reflectional symmetry line axis, axis of symmetry, and we folded it on that, yes, it would be identical. But I wonder if we use this line. If we fold that at a diagonal, this rectangle, is it gonna look exactly the same? Is one side gonna fit exactly on the other side? And if you can imagine folding that in your head, what you're gonna do, if you fold it on this diagonal, your original The bottom part of your rectangle is going to be right there. And then when you fold that bottom part up, it's actually not going to lie perfectly on there. Instead, it's going to come up here and then come down. So there's not diagonal symmetry on that rectangle. Definitely, there is a line of symmetry on the rectangle. It's not this red line. If you can imagine folding the rectangle right in the middle, then yes, the blue would go right on top of the old and it would be perfect symmetry. So that is a line of symmetry, the green one. You have another line of symmetry on this rectangle that goes right across the middle you fold the bottom part up, it's a perfect match. So the rectangle has two lines of symmetry. There are two places that you can fold that rectangle and have two identical pieces. You make the crease, it's identical. So let's look at a triangle. 
And let's talk about that. Let's see lines of symmetry on triangle. Well, we've got three different kinds of triangles. We have the isosceles triangle, which means all sides and all angles are equal. Then we've got, excuse me, the equilateral triangle, not the isosceles. Then we have the isosceles triangle. Looks like a tent or a traffic cone. And then we have a scalene triangle. So a scalene triangle, nothing is the same. So let's label those. This is our equilateral. All sides, all angles are equal. This is our isosceles. Just these tall sides are equal. And this one is our scalene. That might be a new word for you, scalene. But scalene means no sides are equal at all. Nothing in this triangle is equal. So an equilateral triangle has some specific lines of symmetry. Look at that and see if you can figure out how many lines of symmetry an equilateral triangle has. Well, here's one. If you folded it right there, it would be identical pieces. But because all three sides are equal, you could also fold it right there, or you could fold it right there. So an equilateral triangle has three lines of symmetry because there are three places you could fold it and get an identical shape. Now, an isosceles triangle. If you imagine folding it there, no, that's not going to be identical at all. The only place you can fold this isosceles triangle is right down the top there because those sides are identical and it would bisect the bottom. So an isosceles triangle only has one line of symmetry. Now this scalene triangle, there is no line at all. There's no symmetry. There's no place you can fold a scalene triangle and have it make this actually a little bit better. It doesn't matter how I draw it, it looks collateral. There we go, that's better. No place you can fold that and have two identical pieces, okay? All right, so, Let's talk about regular versus irregular polygons. Remember, irregular, they're just not irregular, they're just not regular. <laughs> regular polygons have all congruent sides and angles. Everything in a regular polygon is the same. So that would mean a square is a regular polygon. All sides and all angles are equal. How about a kite, a regular kite? I'm trying to draw this as closely as possible to regular. And then our rhombus. So we have a square, we have a kite. All of these are parallelograms that we have studied and we have a rhombus. How many lines of symmetry are in these? Pause for a second and see if you can figure this out. For your square, you can fold it diagonally here, you can fold it right down the middle there. You could also fold it on the middle here. And you could fold it diagonally here. So a square has four lines of symmetry. It might be good to get a piece of paper and cut yourself out a square and do this folding as a hands-on just so you can visually see it. The kite, 
Could you fold the kite this way and have two identical pieces? No. The only way to fold that kite is there. Now, it's important to know a kite is not a regular polygon. Not a regular, because all congruent sides and angles are not equal in a kite. Okay, so no. One line of symmetry in a kite. Now let's look at the rhombus. If we folded the rhombus here, would we have two identical pieces? No, they wouldn't because there's there it's a diagonal shape. So in a rhombus, we have this and we have this. So a rhombus has only two lines of symmetry. Now that was some parallelograms that we covered way back, specifically quadrilateral. And now let's look at some regular polygons, because I'm sorry that I mentioned regular polygons and then started talking about quadrilaterals. Let's look at specifically regular polygons now, because a regular polygon has some pretty cool things to it. Definitely a square is a regular polygon. An equilateral triangle is a regular polygon. But we have some other regular polygons. For instance, a pentagon. Penta means five. Because you have five fingers, and that's what you point with. So a regular pentagon, if all sides and angles were equal, let's look at all the ways we could fold it. We could fold it here and get two identical pieces. We could fold it here. We could fold it here, here, and here. So a pentagon has five lines of symmetry because it has five sides, all the exact same. Well, what about a hexagon? Hexa means six. It's the by a six-sided object. And how many times, how many ways could you fold that and have an identical shape? So the hexagon's a little weird. And in my picture, the top is a little bit wider than the other one. So you are going to have to imagine that those were the same. So you could take your pentagon and fold it, hexagon, excuse me, and fold it in half there. You could fold it in half here. You could also fold it in half here. And either way you go, you have an exact half. Now, another way you could fold this hexagon is here. Or here, or here. So a hexagon has five sides. It also has five lines of symmetry if it's regular. If it's an irregular hexagon, we don't know. So basically, your regular polygon all have the same number of lines of symmetry the number of lines of symmetry equals the number of sides so a heptagon with seven sides would have seven lines of symmetry an octagon with eight sides would have eight lines of symmetry now, another shape that we have dealt with is a circle. How many times 
can you fold a circle and get an identical half? Definitely, we could take this circle and fold it in half there. But what about here? Yep. How about here? Yep. Here. For sure. Here. Here. Can you count them? Is there an end? Can't we always go between the other one? So for a circle, what's the number for no limit? What do we say when there's no limit at all? What is the term for that? Because the circle just keeps, the lines of symmetry just keep going and going forever. What is that term for something that goes forever? That is infinity. And the way we draw it is this symbol. infinity. So a circle has an infinite number of lines of symmetry. You can't count them. Because they just keep going and going and going. All right. Okay, so there's also rotational symmetry. So rotational symmetry means if I rotate something, will it look the same? And I might try to do another share. We'll share a web page with you. It has a pretty good demonstration of rotational symmetry. Oops, not that. So if we look at this rotational symmetry, one, two. If you go one time all the way around the circle, how many times will it be identical? There's one and we're halfway around the circle. Two, we're back. Now let's look at the order of symmetry with three. So this shape has a rotational symmetry of order three. That means when this goes all the way around, it will have been identical three times. One, two, three. Rotational symmetry order three. How many times does it match as you go all the way around the circle? Now, if we look at some propeller blades, two propeller blades, if you go all the way around the circle, all the way around 360 degrees, how many times will you have the identical picture? So you would have an identical picture here when you got halfway around the circle, and then you wouldn't have an identical picture again until you got back here. Both of these pictures have the identity order two. You have to go 180 degrees before the picture is the same. Once you go 180 degrees, counterclockwise, or in this one, clockwise works as well, you have the identical picture. Okay, so let's look at order three. So as you rotate around the circle, how many times will you have the exact picture? So on this one, when we rotate this propeller here, when we get to this spot, it's identical. There's one. Then we're gonna take this propeller on down here. Boom, identical, there's two. And then back where we started, that's three. So it's gonna be identical three times. Well, what's the angle of measure between there? 
So 360 divided by three tells you the angle between. So every time you rotate that 120 degrees, you have an identical picture. So the angle of rotation on that symmetry is 120. Now let's look at order four. So if we start with this propeller right here, here's our beginning point. We go here, picture is the same. Everything else is rotating at the same time. Go here, we have an identical. Here we have an identical and back. So four times we have the same picture. That means to figure out the angle between there, 360 divided by four equals 90. Every 90 degrees, we have an identical picture. And we could also look at something with order eight and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? All of these pictures at the bottom have an order of symmetry eight. Do you have a worksheet to go with this that's a little different? It's not the standard multiple choice worksheet. This one has pictures with choices. So you're going to upload pictures of your notes, handwritten, still yet, it's still a Google form, but the worksheet just looks different. You're gonna upload work shown, draw the pictures, put something on paper. When you write, it helps for you, helps your retention of knowledge. There may not be algebraic equations to solve on this one, but you can certainly draw pictures and draw lines of symmetry for your examples, just like I did in a presentation. And use homework help for any of those that you have struggled on. Use that one. It'll put me. And last but not least, put your multiple choice answers into the Google form. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson. Enjoy symmetry.